Hey guys, Owen here, and today I'm going to be building the 172nd scale Focke Wolf FW190 kit from Airfix. As always, I washed the parts in warm soapy water and painted the small parts while they were still on the sprue before I began. Seat belts were made from thin strips of masking tape. The cockpit detail was very nice, but unfortunately for some the instrument panel was a decal, not raised detail. The pilot figure was good, but I didn't use him as he would hide the cockpit detail. The gun sight was a piece of clear plastic which I glued on with PVA glue, as the usual poly cement glue would make the clear plastic go frosty. I found fitting the two fuselage halves together difficult and they had to be clamped tightly together until the glue dried. A pin vise was used to drill out the holes, but I forgot to drill out the ones for the rack to hold the fuel tank on the bottom. The piece of engine cowling with the guns on fitted too tightly lengthways and some sanding had to be done, but widthways it left a gap which I had to fill. The rudder was a separate part so it can be angled however you like. I had to be very careful when handling the model after attaching the wing cannons as they could be easily snapped off. The wheel wells had good detail and I used a dark wash to bring this detail out. The fit of the wings and fuselage was too tight and so sanding was needed. I went a bit too far though and it left a gap which then needed filling. I sanded the fuselage joints until they were flush, then re-scored the recessed panel lines that had been lost. The panel lines on the model were all very nice and thin. Here I'm filling the gap in the engine cowling and around the wing roots and the nose. Once the filler had dried I sanded it down to smooth it. To make it easier to paint I stuck in the very front nose piece, but this meant I would have to glue the propeller in place. Because I forgot to drill the holes for the fuel tank rack earlier, I had to cut off the pegs and guess its position on the underside. I added the retracted landing gear to protect the wheel wells from the exterior paint colour. I thinned Humbrol enamel 27 and painted the first coat on the wings using a wide brush to minimise brush strokes. I painted along the top of the fuselage and feathered the edge of the paint with a cotton wood. To achieve the clowning camouflage I first painted thinners onto the side of the model. I then dotted my thinned Humbrol 27 onto it. This meant the paint bled a tiny amount and created softer edges to each dot. If they didn't bleed enough, I added a drop more thinness to the area around the dot. To soften the grey clouding even further, I painted a thin coat of Humbrol 247 over the pattern. Using a cotton bud, I then blended it into the grey along the top of the fuselage. Humbrol 32 was painted on with a smaller brush, and I left a hard line between it and Humbrol 27, but a soft line between it and Humbrol 247. A thin coat of Humbrol 27 followed. I decided to add a second coat of clouding, so repeated the process painting the area first with thinners and then dotting the grey over it. Once dried I again covered the clouding with a thin coat of Humbrol 247. The third coat of 247 finished the underside. Humbrol 24 required at least five coats due to its light colour and it being acrylic paint. The spinner was painted Humbrol 34 which required at least four coats and the propeller blades were painted Humbrol 91. Here I'm painting the exhausts and guns from Brawl 56, however I later painted the guns black. To create the swirl on the spinner I cut a tapered piece of masking tape and wound it round the spinner. The landing gear went together fairly easily. The wheel had an oval fitting so you can only put it on in the right direction. The fuel tank was in two halves which didn't fit very well and needed a lot of sanding. With the swirl neatened up I assembled the propeller and glued it in place. As an experiment I used watered down PVA glue as a gloss coat before applying the decals. I applied it only to the areas where the decals would go. I made a mistake and applied the stencil data decals first. 
when I really should have done the main markings first. Decals were soaked in warm water for 10 seconds. I placed them on a paper towel to absorb the excess water while I applied microset decal solution to the area where the decals would go. Later, the decals were all coated with microsol to help them further conform to the surfaces. I mixed my chalk wash using chalks, water and washing up liquid and then with a thin brush painted along all the panel lines. There's a link to a more in-depth video on chalk washes in the description. Once the wash dried I took a damp cotton bud and carefully wiped away the excess. To make holes for the cannon barrels I heated a needle and very carefully pushed it into the plastic to make a very small hole. Before giving the model a coat of matte varnish to seal the wash and decals, I attached any small parts that had been left off. While the varnish dried I painted the canopy using a very fine brush. Enamel paint doesn't scratch off as easily with a piece of sharpened sprue, so I'd recommend using acrylic paint. The canopy was attached with a small amount of PVA glue, again because it dries clear and doesn't react with the clear plastic. I found it was easiest to glue the headrest support in place first, then glue the headrest piece onto that, and then glue the canopy piece onto the headrest support piece. With Humbrol 11, a very fine brush and a stippling motion, I simulated chipping along the engine cowling, wing roots, around the canopy, and a tiny amount along the wing flaps and on the leading edges of the propeller blades. Finally, exhaust stains were created with dark brown chalk dust rubbed onto the model and then black chalk dust over the top, dragged backwards in the direction of the airflow. Okay, so the only bad points about this kit was the fitting issues with some of the parts. So I definitely recommend having some filler and sanding paper on hand when building this kit. Apart from that though, it was pretty great. The cockpit detail was really good, and I liked how you could build the canopy either open or closed. The painting instructions were really detailed, which was very helpful, and they also offered alternative shades to each colour, which I loved because it meant I didn't have to go out and buy loads of new paint. Finally, the panel lines were really thin, which was good, and the decals were great quality and really nicely detailed. I'd recommend this kit to more advanced modellers and people with an airbrush, however I hope I've proved that with a normal paintbrush you can get pretty pleasing results. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.